Well good afternoon, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well I thought I'd just do a video today to um, have a bit of a talk about um, some ideas that I'd like to work on over the next few months. Um, in no particular order, the three things I wouldn't mind looking at. Uh, the first one is a, uh, an audible field SWR meter. Uh, with, the, with the nice weather coming on, it's going to be good to get outside and, and start using some of those portable kits. Uh, so it might be nice to play around with a suggestion that was made, like, like I say, some time ago to, to build a, an SWR meter that uses um, audio as the, uh, the user interface as opposed to, say, a meter. So that'd be quite interesting. Uh, something which I have been wanting to build for a while is an, an AM uh, transceiver. I uh, haven't built one of those before and sort of just been thinking about ways of producing the, uh, the amplitude modulation. Um, for example, um, potentially looking at a dual gate MOSFET type arrangement. Uh, there's some AEM nets here in New Zealand so it'd be quite nice to sort of participate in those. So that's something which, which I wouldn't mind looking at. And the third thing which I'm going to uh, look at, in fact I'm actually going to start with this one, is a, a computer controlled RF front end, um, specifically for SDR programs. So I want to build uh, a front end that provides the, the I and the Q uh, audio to um, the, the, the programs you can find on the internet, for example, QuISC or the SDR Sharp or HDSDR and the like. Um, and I want this to be controlled. So I want to be able to manipulate those programs and then have those commands being fed back and actually change the settings in that RF front end. Now that, just been sort of looking over that in the last day or two, uh, that's that's going to be interesting. Um, I'm going to start by using QuISC from Jane's um, Elstrom N2 uh, ADR. And I'm doing that because it's a it's a it's quite a nice lightweight program. It's both transmit and receive because it's going to be a transceiver. Uh, it's written in Python. Uh, it can run quite happily on the likes of a Raspberry Pi, which gives me some portability if I wish to. Um, and more importantly, just looking through the documentation, it seems to be relatively straightforward to interface your own hardware with that particular program. Um, so what my intent for a start is to install QUISC, set it up for some generic hardware, I'm not quite sure what that is, but set it up for some generic hardware, start to manipulate um, the settings with it, or the, the commands within QUISC, and then see what comes out of um, the serial port. So USB to serial converter, um, and this is probably very naive in my, in my, in my part, but you know, this is what I'm sort of hoping, that by m manipulating those commands, I get some kind of um, serial data word coming out of here, um, requiring or requesting the downstream hardware to do something. I then want to basically reverse engineer what those commands are, which will then allow me to write the, uh, the firmware for the uh, Arduino to interface with the software um, and then drive the SI5351 and, and moving forward. Um, what, I, my, what I don't, well, in fact, what I'm not going to do is just simply uh, drop into the Arduino uh, some existing firmware, for example, the Softrock series. Um, I don't tend to just drop that in and, and move forward. Um, my, my real preference is to try and, if I can, work out what's going on by way of commands, write the, write the firmware, uh, and then carry on with the rest of the build. So that's, that's my intent, uh, and that's what I'm going to look at in and around um, several business trips over the next few months. Uh, I, I, I fully acknowledge that I'm, I'm not going to get anywhere near the performance uh, by way of bandwidth that I would have got out of the RTL SDR, this, this, this arrangement here. Um, you know, that's, that's huge, but it's still something which I want to play around with. Um, I'm not quite sure what my bandwidth is on the, the laptop, uh, but you know, if I can get up and around either using the internal sound card or an external one, if I can get up to that sort of 96 kilohertz sampling rate and therefore the bandwidth, then that would be nice. So um, I think it's was it 48 it gives you 296. Either way, um, that would still be certainly be useful and, and something to play around with. Uh, another thing too, there was a comment made uh, about the difficulty in some places in getting hold of um, mixers, for example, the SBL1, uh, and as well as uh, in that particular case uh, the Teensy and um, the audio board. So in this particular case. 
for the mixes, I'm just going to keep things nice and simple and use the, uh, the NE612, little active mixer here. Uh, got some internal gain, which would be quite nice. So that's that's what I'm I'm, I'm initially thinking to use for the uh, for the two mixers. Anyway, so that's all I really wanted to cover today. So like I say, just the three ideas for the next few builds. Um, what I want to do uh, moving forward initially with this Quisk program, and if I can uh, try and work out what's coming out of Quisk and and write the firmware for. For the Arduino. If anybody's got a heads up knowledge of that or some, some pointers then, then please uh, feel free to leave a comment. Um, that would certainly be useful. Otherwise I will start to have a bit of a play around uh, and see what I can work out. Okay I think that's all I want to cover today so I'll say 73s and uh, I will certainly put up a, another video once I've uh, got something uh, useful to pass on and and hopefully it'll be uh, of, of use to someone. Okay, 73 is all, and I will certainly catch you next time. Cheers.